On this week's show, having sucked the hind teeth for 10 years, Ulster now better than Munster for this decade. <laughs> and we marry off our penguin swingers in decommissioned churches. Trimby talks about how he gets more ripped. Ripped for 2020. Pat will also be springing a very, very special surprise black and white on us. So stay tuned. Joe presents Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby, together with Guinness. Hello and you're very welcome to Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby, here on Joe, together with Guinness. Happy New Year to all of you penguins out there. We hope you have had a great Christmas and uh, you're having a great 2020 so far. I've met a ton of penguins over the last week um, at all different gigs and events and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and did you say this before where you've met uh, couples that are penguins? Yes. I've met a few couples that are, yeah. they watch the show together yeah. as a couple. Isn't that So mad? sweet. Yeah, it's like we bring them together. Yeah, it's amazing. As little, do you know the way <laughs> penguins are one Like of an them? arranged marriage <laughs> by us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you two watch that, you two watch that. <laughs> we should do weddings. <laughs> we should do weddings. You do communion? Yeah. So you just... Uh, uh, broaden your church offering. Yes, so we do church. We do church gigs with Hermitage Green, and then uh, sometimes, like there's one in Cork, which is a decommissioned church. And decommissioned is that the right like, word? In the context of Northern Ireland, it sounds like they've handed it in their arms. <laughs> <laughs> It's the same. I don't think they can give out bread or holy water anymore. They've been confiscated. No blades, no bows. <laughs> Leave your weapons here. There's no bar, so people have to bring their own drink, but some people forget, so we always arrive with uh, a bag of cans and put them at the front of the stage before the first song, and then people come up and you have to hand them out, uh -huh. like mass, like uh, uh, Holy Communion. Uh, so, we should, but we could do weddings, and yeah, we could, like... Do you know that people do humanist weddings now? Uh -huh. And penguins, of course, are animals that they find a partner and they stick with that partner for life, don't they? Yeah, but penguins then, they also have a bit of a community thing, don't they? I've seen penguins in documentaries all huddling together. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, what's going on in that huddle, folks? Yeah. <laughs> They're all kind of... Swingers. Yeah, swinging. So we could have swingers as well as uh, loved up couples. It, it would be niche. A swinger party with Baz and Andrew on the TV. <laughs> on the know. TV. I don't know if there'd be a massive market for it, but it would be neat. There'd be no one else would be um, servicing their needs. Okay. Not be so else. big shout out to our swingers who are currently getting up to all sorts while listening to us. Um, a big shout out to our Facebook fans as well who have been great growing. My New Year's resolution is going to be give the Facebook um, group more attention. Is it? Just... I just decided. <laughs> <laughs> like what? I like? And, and get more ripped. Oh, is that your New Year's resolution? Mm -hmm. More ripped or ripped? Oh, sorry, ripped again. <laughs> sorry, no more I, ripped. Okay. Yeah. It's been a while, I'd say. It's been 18 months. Well, actually, it was already starting to drop. What getting, do you mean? <laughs> you were getting oh, a bit, don't nod. You were getting a bit sad. <laughs> <laughs> your belly was getting sad oh, there. Oh, shame. Yeah, I remember you when like, you were always quite well... Uh, you were very physically uh, ripped, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. Searching yeah. for another expression. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, were, you were always ripped. But then, yeah, so when we first got here, for some reason at the start in the first show or two, you had to take your top off, and I was like, ah. Oh, shame. <laughs> He's left himself go, so, so that's the plan. <laughs> you, never, <laughs> you should have told me at the time. No, I Why did it go on for 18 months? Because you were tired. I was letting you, letting you slide. I thought we, I just, I thought we were at the point where we could tell each other we're not ripped anymore. <laughs> I thought it was the dad bod, and I don't like your nose piercing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that you, day was, but lied. now I'm telling you, you lied to me. Yeah, well, I got rid of you. Convinced me to take it back. Yeah, just, just so I'd look foolish. Oh my god, I do like it. Okay, um, there's nothing about you I don't like. No, <laughs> <laughs> I love your dad bod, but uh, but I'd agree. Because <laughs> I love your dad. <laughs> That's how I gotta do it. <laughs> I haven't met your dad, but I, I endeavour to meet him. He's grand. He's grand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got lots to talk about. Um, oh, oh um, um, before we start, yeah. I received um, oh. I received a text from Paddy McAllister. He's upset <laughs> that oh. we suggested that his headbutt was a red <laughs> card. <laughs> was, he, uh, he, was he genuinely pissed off? He sent me um, a gif 
of uh, O.J. Simpson trying on the glove. Because <laughs> <laughs> he got away with it. He's, okay, <laughs> so he's guilty. He's, I mean, he, he demanded a, um, an apology from me. Look down the stare down the, the so face Patty, of that camera there. I am sorry. I am so, so sorry that the integrity of the game has now been compromised by letting you play, having just headbutted Ulster's most important player. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a shame. Shame for rugby, and I apologise to any new people who aren't familiar with rugby who may not want to send their children to play rugby now because, because headbutts are fine. Mm. So it's an apology of sorts. I second it. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good lad, Paddy, we, we'll isn't he? <laughs> he's great. He's great. Good lad. Uh, we would we'll await your rebuttal on Facebook at Trimby would be on to you there. Yeah, it was, they, they said it was accidental. Mm. Yeah. Is that what he said? No, that's what the, that was the, like, the conclusion. That the the sighting commissioner came to. Ah, it was or the it, hearing, yeah. whatever. Was it? Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you're just like, you're not, you're not having any of it. As we said before, when Marcel gets here, runs out, you you do silly things. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, they didn't miss him at the weekend, did they? Uh, and we'll <laughs> we'll get through that with. Uh, oh, sorry, Mar I, th I thought you meant. Connor didn't miss Paddy McAllister. <laughs> 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 they could have done with a number of Paddy McAllisters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> quickly, where's <laughs> Paddy McAllister? <laughs> they did get him on the field pretty quickly. Uh, but so sorry, Paddy. Yeah, sorry, Pat. We love you. Um, so yeah, loads to talk about, including John Cooney and Stu McCluskey putting up their hands for uh, for uh, Six Nations, um, Monster, Leinster, uh, Leinster throttling poor old, old Connacht. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was straight away from minute one. Yeah, it's tough. It was ominous. Um, I'm talking rugby. Will we get? <laughs> we'll get Fla out in a few minutes. Um, we'll get him out now. We've we got we got plenty of Champions Cup to talk about at the weekend, uh, coming up, and those games to review as well. So, let's get Fla out. All right, welcome Jerry Flannery to the show. Happy New Year, man. Happy New Year, lads. Good to have you back. Sorry, I missed the last one. That's I fine. Couldn't, I couldn't get a childminder. Oh, you could have brought them. No. <laughs> Four and a half hours in the car would have just been torture. Uh -huh. Torture. Well, we were fine. We got on well without you. Um, mm, I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you were uh, co coms for Leinster uh, Connacht the other night. Um, I enjoyed your I Ashley Schaefer. Did oh. you? Oh, did you? No, it's a different Did one. you realise you did that? Which one? All the while. <laughs> <laughs> do, you do you watch Eastbound and Down? I've seen a couple of them, I haven't seen enough. Will Farrell's character in it. And Pat, you're right, he referenced him a few weeks ago as well in his show. Plums. There's a, the plums, there's an outtake where he's talking about... Um, right, Blue Hue. About his plums. Get ready to see him, farmer's market. And he goes, all the while, my plums are just dancing away in the sunlight or something like that. And he, he loves that. And then it, he was talking about I think Frawley just, and Ring Rose's little wraparound at the weekend and how... <laughs> Uh, Leinster were pulling the line and then he just goes, all the while. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've just watched it so many times, man. I just go on YouTube, it's go, oh, Ashley Schaefer out there, Ashley Schaefer, he's going down, I just watch it. Like, and it, it's just working its way into my common language now. Yeah, you start talking like a deep so southern <laughs> kind of car salesman. Excuse me, Your Honor, <laughs> that's not how we do things around here. I started talking to the kids like that. I start reading like uh, there's a book about a turtle who's leaving uh, the farmyard and he's saying goodbye to everyone like see you in a while crack it out and I started talking like I'm a I'm an elderly uh, African American woman from down south and I'm like oh lordy lordy <laughs> so uh, yeah it's, do you do that do you uh, talk to kids <clears> in any weird work I put on um, I put on accents for different characters in books mm. occasionally um, I listened to a podcast there recently of uh, Murray from Flight of the Concords. And he was saying, uh, bedtime is his time to shine. <laughs> <laughs> it's pure theatre. So that kind of inspired me to get into it a bit more. Yeah. Um, but also, you, um, you did a, like a Hawaiian pun. <laughs> is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> I have to do something, man. The game is just like... I, know, I, I was going to ask you, actually, because um, I've commentated in games that are, like, if they're totally one-sided, it's so boring. Mm. And that's obviously what you were suffering from. Like, I'm gonna mix this up a bit. Yeah, I know. I was like, I was gonna keep doing it. You know, where you kind of get a joke and you go, oh, "That was kind of funny." And then you go, "I think I'm gonna overdo this to yeah. annoy people." And I was like, oh, "You know, you gotta, you know, you gotta take a dip." <laughs> yeah. And then I'll just come back after yeah, yeah. about four or five reps. If I knew he was gonna get more and more Salanoa, the Hawaiian yeah. tight head that came on from, if I knew he was gonna get more and more involvement, so I would have kept doing it. Oh, here he is again. Aloha. Uh, 
It was just, it was desperate, man. It was like... It's also quite difficult on co-coms if there's another... Sorry, if, if you're by yourself, because there's a commentator and just you, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you've got someone else, you can kind of bounce off a wee bit, but no matter how good your pun or joke is, if you say, Aloha... <laughs> there's a pause and there's no one to bounce it off you're just you're like this aloha I hope everyone's laughing at home but everyone's going what, the, what is that clown saying you attempted to ha 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 <laughs> add some canned laugh to yourself it's just they should have just blown the game up and just said that was it at half time yeah. man it was like what did the conic lads say listen let's get an early score and we'll get right back into this we yeah. just need 41 points I was yeah. just there you know, because it, it went to change rooms at halftime. Mm. Leinster were just sitting about. Yeah. Casual. Le- Connor were... <laughs> Smoking fags. In the <laughs> Connor turned like this. So up for it. Yeah. I was going, that is a tough... That's a tough... Whoever's in charge there, whoever's doing his hawking. When they ran out and I was looking through the two sides, I was like, oh, man. And I was like, this could be ominous for Connacht. Hopefully they, they get into this well. In the very first one, they just lose a line out and Peter Dooley makes a break, offloads Max Deegan, Troy. After like a minute and a half, I was like, oh. That's the way this is going to go now. Mm-hmm. And then it was like they just kept picking up scores all the way through it. And it was, it was hard watch. Touching mm-hmm. on, on Max Deegan, did you get a uh, hard time for giving Rhys Ruddick? Yeah. yeah. Match? I think um, some guy said to me, he goes, how did you not give Max Deegan man in a match? And I was like, when I looked at the stats, I think the, I think the guy had just taken stats off somebody else that were incorrect. Because I went <coughs> up and I compared them. And I think Max had two carries more and two tackles more than... Than Reese, but I thought like you know I, I thought Luke McGrath was was playing really really well, but then and I thought Peter Dooley was playing really well. Both of them were taken off because I thought like it's not like someone's winning their individual battle really. You know I thought McGrath up against Blade was a good match, but Blade was playing against a pack that was getting killed, and then I thought McGrath kept real good tempo on the game all the time. Like what stood out was whenever whenever Leinster attacked, when they attacked the line, two seconds later they're attacking the line again. So there was no, no, no respite for the, for the Connacht D. But then when Connacht were attacking, they would make a little bit of a breach and then they would drop back 15 metres into shape and then the ball would go all the way back to Conor Fitzgerald and Conor Fitzgerald would hit someone and Leinster would just come up and smash it again. And I was like, OK. So I could see Luke McGrath. But then after a while, I went, OK, Luke McGrath's gone, Peter Dooley's gone. Deegan was outstanding. But I thought I thought Reese Ruddock, you know, in those games where it's forty nil and everyone's just going to toss the ball around. I thought Reese did a lot of really good things yeah. that opened up space for everyone else. I'm a fan of Reese. I think he's underrated. I don't think everybody appreciates how good he is. But see, see, we were talking about the little subplots that we had the heads. Yeah, McGrath, Cuban Blade. It's the same thing everybody's talked about. Uh, Marie Cooney. Yeah, I know we'll get on to that, but it's so fake. It's just your play- one scrum house playing in a winning team and the other scrum house. Playing in a losing team, well, so in, it's not it's in in the in the blade blade and McGrath for sure. <coughs> but like, Munster are, are pretty are pretty are pr- were pretty well balanced going into the game. So you you'd like to see which which team? Oh, going into the game, but one scrum half gets, you know, the ball served on a platter, <coughs> perfect ball, perfect bit of field play. The other mm. scrum half has to mm. kind of battle a little bit more. Anyway, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Mm. Yeah, we'll be getting into it now. <laughs> are uh, we are we already fed up with the Leinster game? No, I just thought, like, I was there, like, it's, it's January and they've still not <coughs> lost the game. That's yeah. what I kept thinking to myself, like, after a while, I said, they've still, not, and it's not like they're reliant on any one or two players. It's like, whoever comes through, just it's next man up and they have to take their opportunity. They know they won't get another chance. Like, mm. myself and Baz were talking in the car on the way up from Limerick this morning about how good Kieran Frawley was. And then mm. you've got Frawley, you've Harry Byrne, you've Ross Byrne, you've Johnny Sexton. Yeah. You know, it's, it's keeping all those guys happy. Um, but how do you keep them happy? Like you, you were talking on the TV the other night about the the wealth in, ba- in the back row. Mm. Um, when you have uh, Will Connors, you've Scott Penny, you've uh, Levy, Levy, you've Van der Fleer. Um, who else did they have seven? Doris, Doris as a seven. Penny as well. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you're let's say Scott Penny, who's been he put he was brilliant last year. He's pushed down a little bit. So you're him. You've got. Uh, Van der Fleer will come back and play the majority of big games now for the rest of the season. You would think Will Connors will play and then you have Dan Levy to come back mm. uh, for next season. If you were a, a big French side, would you, would you come in and just offer him a chunk of, chunk of cash 
Is that going to, I would imagine that will happen, you know, you know, look at the wealth they have at 10, as you said. Mm. Tim Frawley was unbelievable tonight, what a brilliant player. Yeah. And then, like, I haven't seen a huge amount of Harry Byrne, but everyone's saying he's, he's potentially going to be even better than Ross. Mm. Ross is playing brilliant rugby with Johnny Sexton. They've all these, they centred, they've a wealth of, uh, of talent as well. Do you reckon they'll, they'll be able to hold on to those players? I think, I think, he, like, Will Connors is 23 now. Uh, I think Penny is probably 20, 21, is he? So I think it's, it's, it's only when you get to that point when you're knocking on the door and then you realise you're not going to get a goal that, that that's when you decide to go. So I don't think Scott Penny would be looking to go. And I think for a lot of the French teams, it would take for a coach who, who knows the Leinster, who, know, who knows the, the, the landscape of the Leinster squad to go over there and say, yeah, we can go off and sign this big name guy who plays in the Six Nations or this guy from the Southern Hemisphere and it'll cost us X amount of money or we could go and we could target some of these young guys here who are ultimately going to go back to Leinster um, or mm. back into Irish rugby but they're going to go away and we'll get unbelievable value for them for three or four years and they'll, they'll, they'll be, you know, they'll, they know what it is to work in a, in a champion setup and they have really, really good work ethic. So I think it's the guys who are on 23, 24, you know, like Scott Penny's still going to back himself and say, yeah, I'll, I'll take Van der Fleer's place or I'll take Dan Levy's <coughs> place. And it's only when he's consistently fit and he's there and he knows that, oh, okay, maybe Robin McBride or Leo isn't, you know, or, or else they, they, they'll only get an opportunity every once in a while. And if they don't take it, then probably that's when I think they'll leave. But I think they'll leave to get game time to come back again. Yeah. But they may not come back into Leinster because the conveyor belt of players that's coming up behind them all the time. The, ones that, leave, the ones that leave early, they're the ones that look to come back. But the ones that leave at 24, I mean, I'm not saying, obviously, you've still got plenty of time left, mm. but that's more of a, this isn't working. You're looking at, your yeah. That's more of a long-term. Yeah, I, I understand your point. Like Chris Farrell made, made, made the jump from, from Ulster pretty early mm -hmm. and got, got, getting exposure to the highest level of rugby that you can play is, is, is the most important thing. Mm. So you might be, like I used to look at Tom Hayes when he was in Munster, John Hayes, his younger brother. Like Tom was a brilliant player. Never got opportunities in Munster, really, because you would have had Mick O'Driscoll, Paul O'Connell, um, Donnick O'Callaghan, Donnick O'Ryan would have all been there in the pecking order ahead of him. And then he, he went to Cross, he went to Plymouth, and then he went to Exeter. And then, whilst there was so many second rows in Munster, he was kind of just another good second row. In Exeter, he suddenly became integral to their team. He was the captain, he got them promoted and, and became the, you know, the kind of, their their main the main man in that in that setup. So that's what that's where the benefit of getting players to go away and get them to get as much game time as they can and then they eventually become another option to come back into Munster, into Irish rugby. Mm. Yeah but, that is a big but it is it is like <coughs> looking at like like Jack McGrath probably decided like okay well I'm gonna I can compete here with Keen all the time for Lucid or else I can go up to Ulster and play regularly as a first choice. And even behind him, then you'd Ed Byrne and you'd Dooley as well. Like you know, it's it's they mm. still have massive the strength and depth is huge there. Mm. It's hard to see them still stopped. Yeah, you know? all right. Well, we'll move on to Kings Band, um, where Ulster had a comprehensive win over Munster. Seven out of eight wins in their. <laughs> it's as, no, as if you were coaching the team. You're uh, like, he's, uh, he's, to see him on Twitter, he was chirping in on Twitter as well. Like I was, he, I was getting he riled never up. talks about games, but I could <laughs> see. I was, I was getting riled up. Not that I wasn't in the the, the mindset I am now <laughs> is softly spoken, <laughs> humble but smug. Right, okay, but the mindset I was then during the game, I was like, this guy is riding us. Off. What? Yeah. I oh, he, no, I'm not get sorry. out of it. No, he wasn't. Um, exactly there was a good three or four decisions in the first half that were. 50, no, you're right. 50. Sorry, he wasn't right. Enough. He yeah. was just. He was poor. He was poor for both sides. Yes, fine. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's right. Um, but I think like what. So your complaints were that uh, when Munster scored or Ulster scored the <coughs> Balakrin <coughs> try, they could have had a, a penalty try and a yellow card. Yeah. Instead. Uh, yeah, or they should have gone back for the for the yellow card. It was Scannell came off his feet. Um, and then when they had advantage from that penalty, which was probably I thought was going to be a yellow card, then Murray got in the passing channel, and I thought that was deliberate. I thought that could have been yellow he as well. Oh, I was, he was trying to catch that. He was trying to catch it, man. That doesn't matter. Whenever people say deliberate, 
they, they just mean if they run the risk of, they don't actually mean deliberate, no one deliberately slaps a ball down. Ah, they do. But if you're not, yeah, they do. rarely, rarely. Most yeah. people, whenever they say deliberate, they just mean <clears throat> it wasn't realistic you were going to catch it. And you were more interested in cutting out the pass than catching it. Murray couldn't have caught that. Are you serious? He was too close to the passer, and it was right on the line. It was a try scoring pass. Jeez, I think I think you you you, you get that ball up and 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 would, oh, you've, I know, you have a chance to get to it. I know you have a chance, but I think he this knew is, that. This is this is Conor Murray as well, man. This isn't like some this dull, is dullard dullard tight head <laughs> dullard tight head prop like, and you're going. He's never going to catch that. Like, yeah, I yeah, I think he's obviously got more chances of catching it than a tight head prop. But, but I think still, that's the, they're the rules. Them's the rules. Them's the rules. Them's the rules. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, where no, the rules are up for grabs in that you situation. Reckon? Yeah. yeah, because I've done it a million times. I've been in the passing channel, and it's just how well you disguise it. You just get there, and sometimes it pops into your bed basket. Sometimes you're in the passing channel thinking, if he gets this past me, they're going to score, so I'm going to get in the way. And if I don't catch it, hopefully I get away with it. And then as as my like last kind of five years of my career, less and less you got away with it. Definitely, I got le- away with it less and less. Mm. I remember one time nearly getting my head kicked in by Bundy Aki. <laughs> got a yellow card, and then he um, squared up to me, and uh, and I was like, "Oh crap!" <laughs> and then Jared was spending the time, and Jared was behind him. Jared knew that I was going to get yellow, and he was like, "Let's try and hopefully we'll level it up. Hopefully Trimby, oh, Trimby wow. gets whacked." Genius. And Jared goes, "Do it, Bundy! Do it!" <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no. I, was like, I, I hoped he did. I, I did want him to do it, but I didn't. I wanted. I wanted him to get yellow because it would kind of it make things easier for me. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't. I was like this. <laughs> no, <laughs> Please go easy. Not the face. Not the face. <laughs> no, I, I just Punch think. In the belly. I think. Um, I, don't, I just think right on the try line. That's that's a try scoring pass. I think Murray knew what he was doing. Yeah. Uh, Look, I don't, I don't think that's a poor decision from the ref. <coughs> I think that's 50-50 if, if that's was, what you're talking about. I, I would have thought it was Okay, that one, that one okay is, I, I don't think it's 50-50, I think it's more likely, but the scandal one is ridiculous. That's 100% yellow. When, even when he tr- scores a try, it's a yellow. It's definitely a yellow. Ah, you got the try, will you get over it? Jesus, and he won, okay? Yeah, uh, what the f- what's up, man? It's like the Leinster fans are giving out. They're like, why did you pick Max yeah. Deegan over? Why did you pick Reese Rudd over Max Deegan? I said, man, you haven't lost the game yet. You're demolishing everyone. You've got like five or six players who could play international rugby in almost every single position. Yeah. Stop whinging. No, that's fine. That's fine. But the, as I said, the mindset I am now <laughs> wouldn't bring wouldn't that up because okay, okay. I'm far yeah. too smug. You were fired up. But at the time, I was fired up. I was okay. going, this is going to go to a scrum. They're going to get turned. They're going to... Something will happen. There'll be one or two reset scrums. Okay. Something will happen and they'll not get their try that they deserve. Yeah, you thought Ulster, <laughs> and it's all Scandal's You fault. thought Ulster would crumble, basically. I did, I thought. No, I, I just think you sometimes did. teams get in a position there and they're dominant in two scrums. They've already had two, one penalty before. Should have been a penalty try, in my opinion. Okay. And then one thing would slip up and they wouldn't get it. So that's why I was fired up. Okay. I was like, Dad, I was watching it with my dad. <laughs> and things are bad whenever you start agreeing with everything your dad says. I was like, that's it, I'm going to Twitter. <laughs> I'll sort this out, Dad, sit there. Um, so you said a while ago that the, when it's, when it's uh, lined up or teed up as uh, McGrath versus Quaylen Blade or uh, this one, uh, Cooney versus Murray, you don't agree. You think it's, it's oh, I, I think there's. You can read a small bit into it, but mm. nowhere near. It's it's a it's a tabloid headline. Cooney versus Murray. It's not. It's mm. just it just so happens that Cooney's playing in a team that are really fluid. Their face play was class, and their defense was really good. Mm-hmm. And then Monster struggled to get any momentum, mm. uh, any face play, string it together. I thought they were playing quite deep off the line. I don't know if you the pass accuracy was terrible, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, but yeah. But, whenever you're playing in a team like that, it's it's just very very difficult to. But what about what about like Herring and Scannell then? No, I don't think Niall Scannell played as as well as he could do, but like Rob Herring's the the, the way their lineout functioned, like they lost four lineouts and yeah. they they had a good few that were that were disrupted as well. They're the fundamentals. Like I would say, yeah. if you were looking at who came out on top there, and I'm, I'm, I'm I rate Rob Herring, I would say that Niall Scannell is uh, is still ahead of him now after that game. That's fair enough, but I, but I think. The context of, of a hooker or a goal kicker is a closed skill. It's not completely closed because they're obviously line out callers mm. and line out defence, but I think that's that's an area where you can compare more objectively. Mm. Mm. And yeah. I think that's fair enough. I think the, the line out was struggling at I, times. Yeah, I think there's been a lot of criticism over once over the last couple of days of how that performance. And if you take it as a standalone game, because I think people are looking at it from last week's game against, against Leinster with 
uh, Rassing in mind for next weekend. But combinations on the pitch, they had a front five that had probably never played together, uh, pretty uh, inexperienced uh, front row. Uh, a nine and ten who haven't played together since May of last year, what, maybe five minutes in the, in the World Cup against New Zealand. But, mm. um, and then a back line who hasn't played together in a long time. So, and then you've, you look at Ulster, who that team has played it's well established. Well that? established. <coughs> They're playing every single week. I mean, there's mm. what Hendy and Stockdale are the only two that were gone for the for the World Cup. So every single one of those players that that have been there since since pre season mm -hmm. and most of last year as well. So it is. I find it difficult to look at look at the game as as kind of a trial match or anything like that because it's it's uh, there's a monster in it. But, you know, they're, as Strings said in the co-coms, they're coming back in bits and pieces. Yeah. And, uh, I suppose you, c you could argue, I suppose, um, that uh, Jordy Murphy wasn't there, Marcel Coutinho wasn't there, and they rely heavily on him. Mm. Um, well, Addison's only just back from a ban. Balakun's only back in two games. Mm. Gilroy hasn't played much. Uh, Louis Ludic had been probably Ulster's best back. Mm -hmm. He's not, so, I'm not like... There's a little bit more to come no, from Ulster as sorry. well. sorry. I I but fair enough. There's more, Munster more almost. effective. Yeah. Uh, More affected, sorry. Yeah, I think like Ulster were were, were pretty impressive throughout physically. It's um, just I think the difference with Ulster, they've been creating a lot of opportunities all season. Mm -hmm. Not this isn't the first time, but in the last few games they've started to become really, really ruthless, get into scoring uh, positions and then score tries and put teams to the sword. Harlequins away, Connor last week, and then Munster. They're not the they're not the finished article. Far from it, and we'll find out this weekend. And Claremont still a massive game, really really difficult. Mm. But they've definitely come on a good bit, and in that area, and obviously stuff like line out, um, still a little bit of a weakness. But they're 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 getting the scores that they're creating now, whereas they were creating a lot and then not putting them away. Mm. So. Is yeah. that what you, have you seen that as well? Yeah, we talked about that that little sweep play that that you used to do, and you called it the Dougie. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think they they pulled it off a few times brilliantly. They must have listened to the pod. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and that's the difference. And I think Frawley was brilliant at doing that for Leinster uh, at the weekend oh, as well. A, like a swing, a swing, a, a swing, or even just a, a spot play out the back. Um, you know, the one that uh, that Stockdale yeah. almost put Balakun away in the corner for, and yeah. uh, when he kind of turned in. Earls the inside out, kind of the way Ryan Giggs used to run at, at defenders. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. um, and it's it's, and I think when you look at Joey Carberry when he's doing those spot plays, mm. I think he was just a little bit, uh, uh, probably off 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 where he should be at, at this point. He's off the pace a little bit, not injecting a lot of pace into that, not committing any defenders, and that's something that will take three or four games before before he get back to that. I think and trim, huge trim, moments. Trimby's Trimby's point, like. Is that when Munster m moved the ball to the back line, they actually weren't on the front foot a lot of the times, and they had they were just that they had to reload for huge depth, which gives the opposition time to read what you're doing. Then, you know what I mean? It's it's fine having depth running onto the ball and then being able to challenge events, but if you're on the back foot and you're just trying to go backwards and then your pass accuracy is is off, I think that's that that would have made it a lot harder for Joey going back in. But yeah, I thought it was the <coughs> Ulster cut them off quite a bit with their their line speed. First that, of all, that's because they were so deep and they were on the back foot. Like yeah. the Ulster defenders are running onto them, yeah. and Munster are just trying to shift it, shift so, it, shift it. So when oh. you're when you're saying like for Leinster, uh, for when Jack McGrath injects a bit of pace, or Frawley injects a bit of pace, and that Luke. that speed, or sorry, Luke McGrath, that 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 speed of the ball is is just so hard to defend. When you have one carry and it's slow, what's how do you then create quick ball? Is who's who's a job is it to create quick ball? Is the next person on the ball? Is it the ten? Is it the carry? You know, I think that's that's where Leinster have gotten so good. So how, if you as a coach, how would you uh, identify that? Like second or third phase? Okay, we need someone here that injects a bit of pace. Is it? Well, I think if you, the, the the fundamentals that what, what I would understand, and I'm no expert on it, is is if you carry open and you don't get momentum there, then you can't go open again you got to come back and you got to play both sides of the rock because you can generally come back to the short side and you'll get a little bit of momentum. Because when we're talking about with Ardi Savia, how New Zealand would always have a, keep a back row in that wide channel there and they come back to the short side. And they, it's basically because you can't take line speed on the short side. So you can get a little bit of momentum and then that allows you to rebuild, to go open again, then and have another go. And then that's generally what teams do is they'll probe. And I, I watched... Um, that's what was frustrating me with, with, with Connacht at the weekend because Caelan Blade is normally quite good at that. Like he's, 
you know, I know they were playing behind a beaten pack, but <clears throat> he'll probe open, he'll come back. And you watch it with James Ryan always running that short side, that, that line on the short side to hold somebody. And I think that that's, you, you got to probe both sides all the time and just see. And then it's about picking, okay, well, now we've got momentum on the open side. And then you, then you pull the trigger and you go and, and you let the back line have a cut. Um, <clears throat> what, what, Connor, what happened then quite a bit was, and I think Munster did this occasionally a little bit as well, Keelan Blade would, would have a little bit of a dart or he would just scoot a little bit, take a couple of steps, mm. and get a defender, turn his shoulders in. And then the, the rest of the guys, either the forwards or the 10, whoever it was, is sitting at depth. Then he has to pull it back, and it was pointless. Yeah, yeah. And then the, the defender gets to recover. Very much so with, with, with Connacht. Yeah, they and, and a little, only a little bit. Now, I think I was only... I was, um, you mentioned it in the Connacht game, mm. drew my attention to it, and I was thinking that's actually similar to what Munster did a little bit. Um, but the other thing Munster did was, so first of all, they're, they're playing too far off the line, playing too much depth, and then whenever they go wide again, if they go out the back of that first pod, it's too long a pass. We saw Luke Marshall getting the ch uh, passing channel a number mm. of times, and then Will Addison smashed Scannell mm. at one stage off first phase, just a long pass. It seems... So do you think it's, it's the 10's responsibility to, to shorten up the pass from 9 to 10 and then inject a bit of pace? and start trying yeah. to find it levels. <clears throat> I don't know if it's the pass from nine to 10. Yeah, no, sorry, it is actually, I think that pass is too long. Mm -hmm. And then the pass off, the, they, get, they get nailed in the next pass, that's when they pay the price. Mm -hmm. And if they go out the back again, and then especially Ulster, whenever they start to get their <clears throat> tails up in defense, same with Leinster, they just, they feel invincible and then they start making reads and that's when Jacob gets intercepts and mm -hmm. Will Addison smashes boys. Mm -hmm. They just think it's really, really risky. It's very naive. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> but the, the, <coughs> what, what, what's been what's been good about Munster's attack is their ability to get the ball wide a little bit earlier. But to do that, you actually have to sit the defenders down. You can't have defenders sprinting at you when you're trying to throw that that mm. that pass. I think they I think they you could see that happening well at times during the season. But then in the game at the weekend against or at the the game against Ulster, they didn't have any front. They they weren't getting on the front foot. They weren't sitting the Ulster defenders down. So Ulster were sprinting forward, and Munster were having to go back, 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 trying to and giving up meterage then, and their pass accuracy was off, was off. Yeah. Uh, so like when we talked about it last week, we talked about Munster not passing more than two times in a phase, uh, once in the entire game. At the weekend, I think I, I saw the similar stat. They passed over 23 times or something like that, past three times or more. So the difference in a game plan in a week is astronomical. Like how, how do you go from, from one to the next? Or how do you get consistency? Say, say that to me again. I, I know that I think the stat was three, was three pass plays. Yeah. So they any, had, any phase, they didn't have one phase against Leinster where they had more than three passes. Yeah, and this week I think they had over 20, 23 or something like that. So there was loads of them. Mm. So. Um, if you're trying to play that game, you obviously need to be doing it from start of the season if you want to be going side to side or, or, or loads of whip. Um, because, the, as you said, the pass accuracy was so poor at the weekend. The, this, yeah. I, I'm not trying to jump. I, I'm not sure whether... The, the thing that, that irritated me about the Munster game was that was that just basic fundamental things were, 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 were off against, against Ulster. And... People kind of say, well, oh, Stephen Larkham has come in as the attack coach. What's he done differently now, you know? Or, or is this a case of because he's changing things up? That the, uh, it, that's, that's, that's an excuse. Like, Stephen Larkham would not coach people to pass the ball inaccurately. He would not coach lads to not run onto the ball or to not inject onto the ball. Mm. Like, whatever, he, whatever he, he's tweaking, only the Munster lads in there will know exactly what he's changing. But he's certainly not... It's, it, you can't allow that as a crutch for poor performances and say, well, yeah, look, I, my, my passing was off because obviously we've got a new co we've got new coaches and that's hiding. That's, that creates an excuse for players to say, and I don't think that's fair. I don't think it's, it's, it's certainly not fair on, on the coaching staff in terms of saying, well, you know, because you bring something else in that, that basic fundamental things drop off. That's, mm. and they can get it right. Like if, of all the teams, well, the team I know the best is Munster. I think they can go to Racing and get a result, but They've just made life very, very hard for themselves. Yeah. The, um, I know it's not. I know it's not an excuse, but they do get away with it more whenever you've got a fresh coaching staff coming in. Because that this time last year or earlier in the season last year, mm. Munster went to Thoman, got hammered, and McFarlane was only fresh, fresh in, 
and, and they were kind of getting the grips with what he was doing. So mm. you kind of get away with it, don't you? Yeah, but there's not. The, what, have you seen a huge difference in how Munster are playing? Munster are still kicking the ball a lot. They're still very much set piece orientated. Mm -hmm. I've I've seen subtleties like when they send two guys at the line, they'll hit the outside guy, but they're trying to keep everyone as a live option as, as they go at the line. I've seen them looking to move the ball to the edge a little bit faster, but it's not. It's not like when Tony McGann was coaching Munster and then Rob Penny rocked up and Rob Penny went with 2-4-2, two, two, which is dr <laughs> dramatically yeah. different. Done a guy on the wing. Yeah, the it's, it's not that. No. No, it's I just adding so. some, like, <clears throat> of, of, just of the coaching staff that they changed, they've, they've, they have a new, a new attack coach and a new forwards coach. Johan is, Johan is going to coach the lineup, so he's going to be consistent with that. That's not going to have changed for them. The defence will not have changed for them. Um, Graham Rowntree will, will come in and put his put some subtleties in around some of the contact stuff, but but a scrum is still a scrum. And then after that, then it's Stephen Larkin went tweaking things a little bit. So it's not like a dramatic dramatic I understand where you're coming from, but mm. what I'm conscious of is that is that people put it all on Stephen Larkin and they say it's 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 on it's on his change now. That's that's it, you know, like a, the players aren't adapting to it. And I said, that's that's not fair. That's that's giving a something for the players to hide behind. Mm. And I think it's more a case of He's going to like sharpen up certain areas that he feels are really important for for an attack game to run, but it's not it's not night and day, man. It's it should just they should still be able to perform and perform the basics well, and they didn't against against Ulster and and Ulster are, are on fire. I, I, before the game, I thought Ulster would win. I said if, if Ulster gets set piece ball, they'll win because their attack looks really really fluid. And Ulster, when they did win lineouts, they were really effective with them. You know, they mixed it up well, they mauled well. Or else they use McCluskey off him well, or else they, you know, as as a carrier, or as a distributor. Yeah, I, like the way I looked at it is, uh, Munster need to have their strongest team on the field at the moment, because there is a lack of uh, fluidity in in the squad at the moment, and uh, the selection of team of the team has been affected massively by injury and the the amount of minutes that the Irish players could play over Christmas. Mm. If you go back to the Racing game in Thorne Park, and I know a lot of people would have said that Racing should have won that game, but if you watch it back, I completely disagree. I think Munster for 60 minutes of that game were in control. Racing had the 50 to probably 70 minute mark where uh, they got just got a little bit more of a foothold. Munster kicked the ball away a little bit loosely. They got the three wonder tries, the one that Teddy Thomas had the chip down the blind. Mm. Uh, the nutmeg. The nutmeg, and then fucking nutmeg. <laughs> nutmeg, Fuck and then sake. Imov's try at the at the third one. But outside of that, it was uh, Munster played really expansive game, uh, kicked quite well, and they seemed to have a lot of their tactics quite right on the day. They made a little, probably played, could have played a little bit more in in in, in the the Racing Twenty Two, put them under a little bit more pressure. But uh, that was Munster. Like we're fucking, we're playing well here. We're geared mm. up. Took a little bit of a step back maybe in the second half against Saris when we when we lost over there. Um, and then Christmas, great win over Connacht. And then a really strange performance against Leinster um, where we didn't try and play ball at all, which is what's confusing me in terms of tactics. And then last week, last weekend, I just think the combinations and a little bit of uh, rustiness in certain players who've had a bit of time off is probably what led to, to a poor all-around performance. But they got to park that and go into the weekend against Racing and focus on when they played against Racing uh, in Thoman Park. Look at how that performance went and how they can improve on it. Selection-wise, um, JJ was brilliant that night. Uh, missing the drop goal at the end was, was uh, you know, would it, if he'd have gotten it, I think he'd have been a shoe-in for the weekend. But, but you know, and that's how close it is, I suppose. Mm. Um, what do you think? Do you think? They'll go a Carberry at the weekend. I don't know if JJ's. Do you know? I'll JJ's got. I think he's got. I a think he, strain, I think but he has right. a knock. Yeah. If he's fit, I'm. I'm not sure what they'll do. I think. Um, I think Joey looked a bit rusty at the weekend. He mm. was. He was rusty. Mm. Uh, he fell off some tackles. Some of his passes were off. But he was playing in a team that was getting beaten up as well. Um, but JJ is playing well, and I. Th I agree with you. I think. In that in that Racing home game, like they, they, they some real nice continuity. They're getting their offloading game going. And uh, I thought that that was because <clears throat> they they played the Ospreys who who were who were, who were very very weak and they had some good offloading in there and they got their five they got the bonus point out of it and then after the Racing game, Johan came out and said, "This is give us time, give us time," and um, he said, "This is the kind of rugby we want to play." But I, I 
you know, then when they played Saris in the two games, there was no offloading, there was no nothing. Now, it's Saris, so mm -hmm. it's very hard to actually win collisions and get that away. And I think if you're looking at it objectively, Munster are the lowest scoring team for tries in Europe, or the joint lowest scoring team for tries in Europe, but Munster have also got Rassing and Saracens in their group, mm -hmm. which are, and Munster's defence has been outstanding. Mm -hmm. So they've been low scoring games. Um, but I think that, you know, and, and, and the conditions have been, you know, conditions make things t tougher as well at this stage in the season. So if you're trying to judge attack right now, it's difficult. Although, fuck a man, look at Ulster. Yeah. Ulster are tearing up an attack and so are Connacht. So or so are Leinster. Going over to Paris this Sunday. Um, are you doing that? No. No. Um, what, what would you expect? You've been there before. Um, and we've fallen into the trap where it turns into a bit of a carnival over there before. How do you stop that happening um, from the get-go, let's say? You know, how do Munster exit out of their own half? How do they control the tempo? How do they stop it getting into an... I think Racing are probably best when it's unstructured and there's a bit mm. all over the place. How do they stop that? I think that, I think that the <coughs> Munster have to go with good fundamentals. So, like... Obviously, they need to have a, their set piece needs to work well, which they struggle with against Rassing. So their lineup needs to be needs to be on point. And Rassing's contesting lineup is really good with the likes of Lare, with like the like Dunica Ryan will be doing his homework as well. So they've lost Ty Burns, so they're down one option there. Um, they lost Fanine at the weekend, which is a big loss for them from a phys from a physicality point of view. Losing Fanine was big. Um, so who they can get on the field, I think getting John Klein back in, he'll give good ballast. To the to the pack, but I, their set piece needs to needs to function. And we've always we've generally been able to to edge it around the scrum. We'll get one or two scrum penalties, which when t when teams are really bal evenly balanced, those two scrum penalties can be that that can be what wins you the game against Racing. Um, so I think they need to be on point there with their set piece. I think they need to be quite clinical with with getting the ball off the field, mm -hmm. and that if they if you're kicking loosely to them, you're just keeping them in the game. And uh, I think they scored at least two of the tries against in Thorn Park from the, the right idea. Scandal exiting with a long uh, kick out of the twenty-two, mm. but he, he he didn't put it out. Just caught on the on the yeah. on the touchline. Play back inside. Zeebs crashes it up. Play a few phases, and then they scored. And Claremont again yesterday. I think they scored two or three off the same problem yesterday when Claremont stayed in the game for most of the game against Racing yesterday. Boy. Lopez just firing it into row Z on the halfway line, you know, from, from the 22. Um, that's, and I think if Munster go in with that approach and try and take the back three out of the game, although I think Zeebs would be, be out now. He picked up a foot injury yesterday. But, um, yeah, try and slow things down they there. Got, they've got to put massive pressure on Finn Russell as well. Mm. They've got to put big line speed pressure on Finn Russell. So that starts with being able to actually... To, de to deal with the, if they can contest well against Le against against Racing, and if they can stop some of the Racing ball carriers and give them enough momentum, then that they can actually keep keep uh, Finn Russell on the back foot rather than having him running onto the ball when our, our defence is compromised because he's that's when he's really really good. Um, after that, then Munster still need to actually go and play. You know, they can't just say, "Well, we're just going to kick the ball and we're just going to, you know, we're we're, we're going to kick the ball and have a strong set piece." They need to have the stuff that we saw with them moving the ball to the edge that little bit earlier. Um, that still needs to be there because they that's that's where they that's where they look best when they get the ball into the likes of Conway and Earlsey's hands and give them a bit of time rather than the dun dun dun. But I think uh, I think it starts off with the thing that stood out from the Racing game was was the line out. Get mm. the line out right to start with. The scrum will be competitive. They should they should focus it and go after it. Mm. And then uh, using the centres to kick, I think open uh, using grubbers, uh, crossfield drilling it like f using Scannell's boot. Ian Farrell's got a decent mm. boot if he's if he's running on and overs and then drilling it into the corner, trying to trying to pin or pin uh, Rassing in their corners all I'm the just time. Just thinking of Farrell kicking the ball off Stephen Archer's head. He's got a very good <laughs> boot. <laughs> boots the ball off his head. Big target to be fair. Um, no, you're right. Yeah, turning, turning the turning back the French three. and just keep putting the ball in behind them and making their forwards retreat and go back and have to try and exit. And I think that that's. But Munster still have to have the, that ambition that they that they've showed at times this year to go and play. Mm. Um, and I think the fact that they're playing in the, in in La Défense means that that conditions shouldn't be an issue. Mm. How easy is it to to park the last few weeks and try and. Uh, 
and move on and almost look back at the Racing game when they were playing really well and say, look, this is this is where we have to be and not, I suppose, you try and yeah, block out what's happened over the last few weeks because they were in a great place <coughs> and with half a team going out and playing the last two weeks, they've fallen into a, a, a dark place where everyone's like questioning everything about Munster now. I don't yeah. think they are. I think it's, it's, it's an easy week to, to change up. Yeah. Um, change of competition, literally something as trivial as a change of ball, training on Monday morning with a different ball actually feels like a new, you know, new opportunity yeah. to kick on. And even even if it was Pro 14, they'd still be thinking, right, well, we haven't really had a full strength team for the last few weeks anyway. Mm. So it's not really monster that are, are hurting. It's kind of, it's, it's a poor version of where we're supposed to be. I think it'll be fine. I think they'll be able to go in Monday morning now. And, and freshen things up. I think it's a perfect time for them. I think you kick on, and you could you could potentially see a very different side of Munster this weekend. As you said, they have they certainly haven't become a bad side. They've got all all the talent there, all the ability to go out and produce a big performance. And I think European Cup always brings the best out of Munster. This this happens every year. They'll be hurting. They'll be hurting. <laughs> I think they'll be hurting from the last couple of weeks. And then a change of scenery, a new fresh uh, challenge, and then, as you said, remembering how well they played for long periods in the game at home to Racing. I think, think of last year, man. We went, we went, we lost to Ulster away, <coughs> and then we went over to Cast away and lost, and then we had to beat Exeter at home to win. So, like that, like that, that, that same horrible feeling. Like the players are used to it. It happens all the time, and everyone questions you and goes. Oh, they're not going to pull it, you know. But this is the if you flip it and look at the positive side of it. If Munster beat Racing away, they're they're, they're going to qualify then, and then you know everything is golden. They're yeah. they're maybe they're third in the in in the, in in their conference, and they're qualified through Europe, and and the lads go off to the Six Nations, and who knows what's going to happen there? We could get like you could get a lot a lot of Munster players getting starts now that possibly they hadn't been getting previously. So they just need to perform well. If they win against Racing and then they can have a huge performance then against against the Ospreys at home, that's a great place to be. Yeah. And then I, I've been in Ulster teams where after a, a series of, of disappointing results or performances, on a mo on Monday morning you come in and someone goes, like they, they finish the review and it's kind of the informal bit and then someone mm. just goes, lads, I just want to say something. And it's, <laughs> you know, and it's like crisis mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Monster are nowhere near that. No. And see, once you once you hit crisis mode, someone's saying those words. I just want to say something, fellas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you go, oh no, because they say something really dram over dramatic and emotional, and everybody goes, yeah, yeah. What was what was the detail of the video? The <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. What do we learn from this? And then uh, and that ends up being a spiral. The next week, someone says, I know we mentioned this before, but one more thing, lads. Yeah. And it ends up just being like spiraling down. Once you're nowhere near so that, like, sh 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 don't say anything. Don't say anything. Just play dumb. <laughs> 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 New <Yeah>. balls. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Ulster, on the other hand, go to Claremont. Um, a lot of what you described there, I think, is the exact same approach for... It's the same challenge uh, for Munster and for Ulster. Going to Claremont, obviously, if if Claremont... Not if they score first, but if they get, as they, as they often do, first 15, 20 minutes, a real purple patch, mm. and if they get a couple of tries, then it's a long day for Ulster. Mm. It is. It's Then you start going, right, what's going on here? I think if Ulster stay... Not just stay in it, not just be in touch and, uh, in touch and distance, but... If they kind of they make it really competitive, like if they're if they're within three points at half time and they continue to be in the game, then I would I think Ulster have every opportunity of kicking on and winning a tight game because there's a lot of games this season where they've just got a real knack of getting the job done, getting over the line. Obviously at Claremont that's totally different. You've got a lot of work to do before you get in a position to win the game, but uh, a nice balance of being a little bit more set piece oriented, but also you need to match them, fight fire with fire, and play a little bit of rugby. Mm. But similar to what Monster we were talking about there, no, no three pass plays one week, twenty three three pass plays the next week. It's just about picking the right times whenever, and then being accurate with it when you do. Ulster, I think they've got they've got a good opportunity, but Claremont, I don't know how many. Do you remember they went a number of years back? They went 60, 65 games or something in a mm. row. They won at home. I think they're on a roll now as well. I don't know, Pat, if you know the number. No, I, I know. I remember it's 60 odd one, but yeah, yeah it's, it's, just... it's like half that now or something, or 20, yeah. or 20 or 30 or something. But but yeah, anyway, it's it just get a wee bit. The way you described what Monster need to do, very, very similar, I think. 
for what all, what's going to be required from Ulster. To mm -hmm. go away from home, your kicking game and your set piece needs to go well after mm -hmm. that. Okay, um, and then like so John Cooney, McCluskey, <coughs> yeah. Addison, <coughs> potentially Billy Burns, all put their hands up for Six Nations squads. Yeah, um, as you, I, I know we're, we're talking about Cooney, Cooney Murray earlier on. Cooney just keeps keeps turning up, keeps playing well, um, and um, the whole environment, everybody's just helping each other spur on. He obviously got in for a try, kicked well, just did basics really well. One one area, actually, he, he exited, he has been exiting really well the last few weeks. And the area that he probably has got on top of Murray is that loose, that slightly loose, evasive, uh, elusive, sorry, um, trail on the inside, picking up tries that way mm -hmm. and just getting, mm -hmm. getting second touches. I don't think we've seen as much from Murray. That's more a reflection of Munster haven't made that many breaks mm. to get in the position to do that. But the, when, um, Cooney looked a little bit flustered at one stage, and you know, when he exited with the high, the, mm. the box kick that landed on him again, he then he went again. Them, I think, were, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen that from Cooney. The last few weeks, he's been really good at exiting, and that yeah. was the one we area you think you went. I don't think Murray would do that. That's so where I thought it was. This is actually a battle here between the two of them. You know what I mean? I yeah. felt like. He, he, he looked like he was under pressure. Yeah. Um, Having said that, he looked he, flustered at the time, but, but then he regained his composure. When he, when he got the, the try, if you could see how much it meant to him. Yeah. Like, you know, he was, he was happy. So. You and want him Murray, fired up. But Murray, what, Mur Murray's involvement for Shane Daly's try was incredible. Yeah. Yeah. To come around, like think, think how, much, how many nines will take a wide arc there to give themselves a bit of time to you know, stay on the ball. He tucked right around the scrum, squared up onto Cooney straight away, double pumped the ball. He, he was able to pump it and then still have the wherewithal to actually rip it across then as Rory Scanlon was running that line, pulling McCluskey in and just zipped the pass into Joey Carberry, played Shane Daly. Like that's, His that contribution is, was great. Scanlon's contribution was mm. class though. Yeah, yeah. To sit down McCluskey, it was McCluskey, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't. He, he read it, Billy, he read it Billy Burns. Burns but McCluskey turned his yeah, hips in there, yeah. which meant that Joey was able to get on the outside. Yeah, because I thought at the time, I thought he's pulled that back too far and then Ulster defence is going to recover. But then Joey just again, mm. nice contribution from, from him too. Yeah, and that there's like, if you're looking at like Munster's attack play being coached well, that is mm. absolute quality. That is such precision with the footwork, with the handling. And that's why I think when people talk about like saying, oh, you know, the attack isn't working nice, what? But, if you say the attack isn't working, like when people aren't running onto the ball, when they haven't worked hard enough in the previous phase to get deep enough to run onto the ball and actually sprint onto the ball rather than standing there getting the ball statically or, or poor passing, like that's not that's not coaching, man. That's that's just poor poor play. Mm. Yeah. So Cooney, you're right. He's been on fire. He's probably been the best nine in Europe this year, and week in week out, he keeps doing it. He keeps living up to the expectation. Uh, but it doesn't. That doesn't write off how class a player Conor Murray is, yeah. and how capable he is, and how he's the guy who's been doing it at test level for Ireland for years. Here's, here's the question: So who do you start at nine? I, I know. I know you would go Murray start yeah. and Cooney on the bench, and I can see. I can see that. I wonder if there could be something where Farrell goes. You know what? I, I need to change something, and mm -hmm. that might, might be an area where he says, "That's a good opportunity, and we're not losing that much. It's just a change of style." Uh, you know, I, I wonder if it, it could come down to that. Yeah, yeah. I, I looked at it from the pragmatic point of view that, like, Conor Murray's a senior player within the group, very influential, has been a, a key driver in the performance and the success of the team over the last few years, that if you bin him straight away <coughs> and put him on the bench, mm. you know, I think that, I think the, the way to go is, like, what are you losing by starting Conor Murray? He's still absolutely mm. brilliant. You start him and you say, Conor, we need, need you to perform here today. I've, John, John Cooney's on the bench. And then you can bring John Cooney on and you're just going like for like then to see you're comparing them in the same game and then you make your call from there. But one, I think one thing you might lose is it's an, there's an opportunity because Cooney, because he's been playing so well and we've all talked about how class and talented and how much ability Murray has. And he's been there and done it. So much experience and a leader, as you say. Cooney's be, been playing out of his skin week in, week out for so long that if he gets a start, if he starts in the first game of Six Nations, then I think of a lot of other players who are playing quite well will say, you know what, there's an opportunity here for me. It's actually realistic that I could get my spot. Whereas if he doesn't start, then a lot of guys will go, well, here we go again. And it'll be maybe similar to where Schmidt left but off. He, but if, if he gets game time and if he gets game time in the first, is it Scotland first? Mm. If he gets game time against Scotland, then he, he's, you're showing that, look, 
he, he didn't make the World Cup squad. Yeah, I know you've he, shown he, it a he, bit, but you're he, not showing enough, maybe. Uh, yeah. I know, I, I, the, 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 I, I can see it 100%. Yeah, it's, see it's, it. the, it's the flip side of it is, say you start John Cooney, he doesn't go well, and then you've got to go back to Conor Murray and say, listen, I need you to come in and... About that. Yeah, um, sorry about that. That was awkward. Um, you're still but, my number one champ. Yeah, <laughs> you've got two quality players. You keep them, like, you're not going to lose John Cooney by putting him on the bench. Yeah. In fact, he's. You might he's, keep him still eager. And he's he's yeah. jumped. He's jumped. A, he's, he's, his position has improved. And then you start Conor Murray, and then you've, you've, the, you've the luxury of having Cooney on the bench. What about McCluskey? Do you think it's realistic? You can start him. I think we're. I don't know. I think he is playing incredibly well. If he's if he's going to be in the mix, he's got to be in the mix now because his game is rounded and he is playing phenomenally well. I just I think it's the one place where you've got like when you've got Ringrose, when you've got Bundyaki, when you've got Henshaw, Henshaw, when yeah. you've got Farrell, you know, like there's absolute quality there. Yeah. That but Leinster team, uh, when you're Andy Farrell and you're looking at a team that has the habit of absolutely hockeying teams now and playing. Yeah. With such cohesion and such confidence, how do you look beyond them at the moment? You know, <laughs> if it comes to a fifty-fifty go, yeah. that guy who's in an environment yeah. where he hasn't lost a game this yeah. year, yeah, and it's tough to put to, to pick a twelve on the bench as well. So he does find himself in a very awkward position. Yeah, um, great, and it's great call. yeah, it's it's a uh, it's I can't unfair understand. almost, isn't it? I yeah, you, I think you bring, you, he's he's in camp and you see how he goes training yeah. with his peers and you you go from there. I suppose uh, it's because he's playing phenomenally well, mm. like. Just when we like looking at him this year and watching him so closely, like he's kicking off his left, kicking off his right, he's offloading, he's throwing long passes, short passes, he's carrying, he's getting taking the ball right to the line and distributing like the one he put in for Matty Ray, who's who's, who's a real workhorse well as well. Yeah, it? yeah. You, you, Someone so like Matty, Matty Ray changes somebody slightly. Back rows, um, Jack O'Donoghue who's not. Is he in the? No, he's not no. in the squad. Sean Reedy's not in the, sh in the squad. Mm. Uh, Matty Ray's going really well as well. Mm. These guys aren't even getting in the, in the forty-five in the enormous yeah. <laughs> squad. There's so much. Like, Sean Reedy especially, he's been playing class for Ulster. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's physical. He gets. I, I I'm trying to see what his point of difference is though. Um, I can see that he's probably one of the more one of the, one of the better ball carriers in the Ulster pack, but. When I see when I see Jack O'Donoghue, I, I see he gives you like almost like a Peter Omani esque uh, presence in the lineout on on attack and defence. He's that good in the lineout. He's a brilliant mall stopper, um, and he's 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 a good athlete on the field. He's got good offloading. But but Jack is probably what is his best position? It's probably as at eight. So you know he's like he's looking at probably CJ and. Kaelin Doris, Max Deegan, he's probably got a lot of competition there already, Jack mm. Conan, mm. when when he gets fit again. So um but yeah, there is there's a there's real Captaincy for the Irish team, who do you reckon? Johnny Sexton potentially oh, out. Jenny. Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> That's McCluskey is his vice captain. <laughs> Very I, I really don't know. I really yeah. don't know. Because there's so much competition for the back row. Like you next man up you probably think, oh well, it's probably gonna be Pete. Um, depending what that what the, like if they if they if, I think that Cale and Doris needs to play international rugby now. I think he's gonna just keep getting better and better and better. <coughs> I think he's phenomenal. So he'd be a bolter for you for for the Scottish game. You'd have him ahead of um, uh, CJ? Max Deegan. Sorry, what? I was talking. Uh, yeah, I'd have Doris in there. Really? Uh, I think Deegan has been has been excellent as well, but I think that Caelan Doris needs to play international rugby sooner rather than later. And Deegan isn't in the squad, is he? He like, is, yeah. Is he? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Deegan is in the mix as well. I just think Doris just looks that much more comfortable. Uh, well, Deegan is a phenomenal footballer as well. What stands out when I was looking at the at the b the blend that Leinster have in their back row, they have like Van der Fleer's line speed as a seven. They have Dan Levy's all round all round ability as a seven, but he's he's a real poach tread as well. You have Will Connor's massive work rate, and he's 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 a real dominant tackler as well. Then you go like you've got Caelan Doris and you've got Max Deegan at eight, both two fantastic footballers. And then at six you've got like Ruddock's ability to carry into like, you know, into like four or five bodies and still make gain line. Uh, you could throw Scott Fardy in the mixer as well, and then like Jack Conan when he comes back fit, he, you, how explosive he is. They just, there's just so many man. But I think that that Cale and Doris, him getting to play international rugby, and then it's what way do you go after that? Then like if you go, did it? Will they go with Van der Fleer? 
like it, they can literally go, they can mix it up, whatever. They could go Van der Fleer at seven. They could go Pete at seven. Um, I think Pete's ability in the line out is, 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 is important. But, you know, and then you've got CJ who, who never, re who's, still in, who's still playing well, um, has a massive work rate, carries well. So, well, so captain, do you, Pete, Sexton? <sighs> I, if, if Sexton, I think Sexton will be back. I'll probably go Sexton because it's the only guy that I can kind of say. It's going to be in the side. Yeah. 100%. He's captain in Leinster though, isn't he? Yeah. Isn't he? He's club captain yeah. for, for Leinster. Yeah. It just makes it a little bit more difficult to do both, doesn't it? Yeah, but sure. Um, who, who, who would you go as captain? I think um, it has to be deserved, right? I mean, you know, it's, it's yeah. deserved. He wants to be captain. You can't say to him, ah, look, you're Leinster captain. Sorry. Um, mm, I think yeah. if, you, if, you've, if you've earned it, you've got to get it. It, it's it's yeah. been able to go. Oh, this is the guy I'm gonna like. Th this is what we don't know is that is that Andy Farrell may have certain things in his head, and he might just say, regardless of how this guy is playing, he might say, I need Peter Manny in the side every single week because of the line out, of, because of what he gives me in the line out, and because of his leadership ability as well. Mm. And you know, if if Munster are if Munster aren't going particularly well, I'll still back him through that period. Like that's sort of how they worked with Rory. Like R Rory's form wasn't always top class with Ulster, and Ulster weren't always going very well. But they still backed him, and he delivered for Ireland. So that's one one way he looked at it. Or he could just go, I just need to. If I'm picking someone as captain, they have to be a banker for the team, and I have to be able to one of the first names I put down my team sheet. That if if that's the case, he might just say it's Johnny Sexton then, because I don't know who else he picks. No, I know. I don't, actually, there's not that many options. No. Yeah. It's it's probably Pete or Johnny, isn't it? Pete, Johnny, yeah. Is it? I don't like. I think Johnny's more certain than Pete is to to start. I think they're yeah. both certain to start, but relatively. Okay. All in all in all in time. I think there's, yeah, there's going to be a bit to it, man. I, I'm not sure. There's there's so much competition in the background. James row. Ryan, please stick his hand up there. Jeez, <laughs> I think he's this conversation. He's young. <laughs> he's young, isn't he? Yeah. Maybe yeah. maybe at some stage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Pat took a serious offence to Owen Farrell's another high tackle at the weekend. <coughs> Outrage. Um, I was going to say skull. I was say scandal. He, he shoulder to the head, no arm tackle. Who was that on again? Uh, Hayo, Tom, Tom Howe. Yeah. Um, did you see that? No. no. I've, seen, I've seen them before. <laughs> You've seen them before. He does it regularly. Yeah, gets away with it. Yeah. How yeah. does he get away with it? I don't know. <laughs> if anybody knows. Something to do with the royal family, I'd say. Yeah. Conspiracy. I'd say so. There's loads oh, of that I would shit have going on so. at the moment. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, we'll move on. We'll be back with black and white in a moment. All right, welcome back. And it's time for black and white. This week, producer Pat has a black and white challenge that he's kept close to his chest. We'll let him explain. <laughs> um, let, let me guess. Who's the best player you've ever played with? <laughs> <laughs> sort of know, sort of How great is Jared Payne? Um, <laughs> yeah, but the challenge is going to be you two just have two minutes each and you just have to name as many of the starting 15 from when you made your Ireland debut. That's a pretty good question. So Barry, it's easy for you because it's one of three games. <laughs> Four. <laughs> I still have a clue. I still do. Fatty. Think... <laughs> <laughs> Starts wearing thermals to try and hold <laughs> shit in more. Spanks. Yeah. <laughs> Those things where you can like get your shirt and you tuck it down and it pulls across. I've got those we stick on ab things. <laughs> Cristiano Ronaldo. I couldn't even. Yes. So Barry, you have a, you have an option here because you were. Do you know? Yeah, you were. Um, you came off the bench for your debut. Oh but yeah. Then the week after you started, so you can pick whatever game you want there. Can I just blend them Andy. both? So he's allowed to pick any of it, the half of his international games. Yes. <laughs> were you playing? Uh, what game was it? Was he playing? Give the me Argentina, Argentina tour. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I was playing. Oh yeah. well, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> one. All right. So who wants to go first? You go first. Trimby, do you know what game? You, well, of course you know what game it was, don't you? I hope. Uh, yeah. You are uh, pretty blasé you about your rugby career. Huh? What? First, <laughs> first or second? Um, Argentina. Were you there? Yeah, I was there. Right. I'll just. Yeah. All right. I'll give you two two minutes. Okay. All right. Um, uh, Marcus. Um, Shane Byrne. Yep. John Hayes. Yep. Malcolm O'Kelly. Mm -hmm. Jeez, man, you're old. Donica, O'Callaghan. Mm-hmm. Um, um, 
O'Connor. Yes. Um, Who? Simon Easterby. Johnny yes. O'Connor. Concrete. Oh, Johnny. Um, Axel. No. Um, uh, Leamy. Yes. Stringer. Mm hmm. Rog. Mm hmm. Dars. Uh huh. Me, 13. Yes. Uh, Tommy. Yeah. Gervin. No. Jordy. Yeah. And um, Denisicki on the left. Oh, Shaggy. Yeah. Right. It's a good team. How many did he get? He got them all. He didn't get them all, man, because he, he, he. Oh, he like, he, well, he named Axel first. So yeah, he called me. Axel, he called Dennis Hickey. Yeah. But I got them eventually. Hugo McNeil. <laughs> <laughs> I think, Shit. yeah, but yeah, if you, let's say if you went for eight first or Hickey. I think you got. I think it's I'd more difficult for for Baz because it was a tour, a, a tier two tour. <laughs> it was. Yeah. Yeah. Less yeah, household names. Can't remember who these players were. <laughs> um, what was that game that he played? Against? Who was it? The Australia, Australia. in two thousand six or no, two thousand five. Continue. Tell me more. <laughs> how, did, how did that game go? Um, my one of my memories from that game was. Uh, we were hanging in there and then in around 60 minutes back then Ireland always just started to struggle. Drew Mitchell got away and uh, he was just just out of reach from me so the, the sprint was on it was in, in there 22 so I had I was like right I've got the full length to get him here and this is when I was 21 so I was I was fast then and I, I went neck and neck for 10 to 15 20 meters I was like, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> I'm never getting them. And I did that thing where you just, you know dive. you're not getting them, you just dive. Oh, I nearly had them. But it's either that or just run along behind them all the way to the try line. <laughs> you know? Slowly getting yeah. further and further yeah. away from you. It's like when you're running, you're like, yes, I've got that pace. That's what got me here. And you're just yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, it's not working. <laughs> what got him here is faster than what I got me here. <laughs> Surely that's enough time. Yeah. yeah. I still haven't gotten half of them, but... I'll give it a we'll go. We'll guess, we'll guess. Mm. Uh, All right, go for it. Oh, which game are you taking? Or does it matter? Do you want a composite of the two games? I'll, I'll ma yeah, I, I literally can't remember. What about your school's team or something? <laughs> <laughs> uh, rock and roll, lads, has left me in an off my brain in an off. <laughs> Name state. the guys in the band. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was Simon Best in the front row? Uh, one of them, yeah. Yeah, he was a tight taken. head. Tight head. Uh, flat? <laughs> yeah. Uh, was Mike Ross? No. Who's, who's the other prop? Two tight heads. You know? Ulster. I know who you it is. Put, uh, you picked Mike Ross for his Brian Young. Yeah. Brian oh, Young. Very good. Yes. I went on holidays with him afterwards, I believe. Uh, Did you keep in touch? No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Can't talk about him fast. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was Malcolm O'Kelly playing? Mm hmm. Sorry, well, this was Argentina, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Tour, yeah. Leo Cullen? No. Oh, one of the games. I'll give him to you. Okay. Who, who else? Give me another few second rows there just so I can... You have to name them. Drop him a letter. <laughs> uh, Mick O'Driscoll? Yeah. Mick O. And there's a lad who played for Leinster and Munster. Trev. Trev. Yeah. Uh, Trevor Hogan. Uh, back row. <sighs> Blank. You've got Reds uh, in the back row there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back row, I'd say Neil Best. Was he, Neil mm -hmm. Best? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Jamie Heaslip. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, sixes, or was Neil Best six? Sevens. Sevens. Wasn't Wally. Wasn't Johnny O'Connor, I don't Keith think Gleason it was. Keith still in the mix? No. Oh, was it? Mm -hmm. Go Gleason. away. Yeah, yeah. Lovely fella. Where's he now? Is he Australia? Is he? I stop buying, stop buying time. <laughs> uh, Redzer. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy Staunton. Yes. Yeah. God, that was spanky. It's Panky. <laughs> Luke Fitz? No. Trimby? Yeah. Rob Kearney? Yeah. Me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right winger. Missing a winger. He's Brian started. Kearney? Yes. Uh, and I'm missing a 12? Uh, yeah. I yeah. have one. Oh, I know this. I know Luke. this as well. well. Where was I playing? Honest. Uh, cent outside centre. Kieran Lewis? Yes. Ah. Right, full back Wait, then. Fucking centre. Kearney? No. Where was Kearney playing? Uh, left wing. Ah. Uh, full back, Gavin Duffy. Yes. There you go. Well done. 
That was hard, man. That was a hard. Yeah. 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 No. Great <laughs> question, Pat. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. Ah, memories. We were hammered. <laughs> <laughs> were we? No. Was that no. the first test? We're beating in both of them. Yeah. But I think one of them, uh, Jordy missed a drop goal in front of the post. Oh, that's right. And we lost. Contaponi got one. To yeah. Win it. Contaponi was class that day. Yeah. From yeah. what I remember. I so remember we had the reception was in like a nightclub after yeah. the game. <laughs> And they were giving us that Fernet stuff. That, oh. And we were drinking that Fernet. And I remember uh, that was... It was like poutine, basically. Delicious. We were drinking. <laughs> it was, and it was disgusting. my first caps. They were like, oh, you have to drink a pint of poutine. <laughs> it's grey crack. <laughs> it was not. Uh, yeah. Weird. I trimmed you on that tour. one. Well done. Yeah. Well done. Well Thanks. Done. Can you name any of the Argentinians you played against? Apart Cont- from Contepomi. Contepomi. Yeah, me too. No. That was a dead end, sorry. Yeah. Anyway, that's all we've time for. Yeah, it is. It is all we've time for. Sorry, Argentina. Uh, cheers to everybody for listening. Uh, for all you Facebook fans out there, Trimby is going to be in touch with you uh, straight after the show. Individually. Individually. Uh, to any penguins that wish to get married, give us a touch. All right, give us a touch. Uh, get in touch. We'll, uh, we'll be your celebrants or communions. We do bar mitzvahs as well. Um, thank you to everyone watching on YouTube and to everyone that was involved in the show today, to Alan, to Fiona, uh, to Anthony, to Ian, and of course, producer Pat, Thank you all for watching. This has been Baz and Andrews, House of Rugby, here on Joe, together with Guinness. Party on. Party on. Party on.